In this next video, we're going to look at the steel beam that's at the top of the braced frame. And I'm going to quickly sketch in our steel beam, and it is going to be 30 feet. I'm doing this at an eighth inch scale, which would be right there. And so I am only drawing the beam in. In reality, it's part of the frame here. The brace is going down, and it's part of the member. And again, we had an ultimate load of one kip per foot, which would give us a shear diagram. of 15 kips and in looking at that that would give us the moment which we calculated I'm going to draw again a moment up just for this example. And that would be W, L squared over 8. W is 1 kip per foot. The L is 30 feet. Eight divided by which would you give us? When just doing a quick preliminary check, I'm going to go to the steel manual and start looking at some of the sections. Um, we said we were going to try a preliminary section of a W16 by 36. In looking at it, we also said that our unbraced length that we were going to shoot for was going to be 5 feet on center. And this has to do with the bar joist framing on top. And so what I want to look at here is go to a W16, the size of the member we're looking at, and look at a W16 by 36. And if I were to go through this exercise, we could run it in ASD because we have not factored the load in robot and that would be just part of the comparison. But I'm looking at fully braced length of 160 kip feet. And if I come over and look at its dimensions we need to have that full brace length, it's five point three seven feet and what that's telling me is I'm going to get the full MPX load or the factor of safety will be 160 feet and that is greater than or equal to 12 kip feet and so I'm, I'm feeling like that member size is a good place to start. This is not a detailed calculation of the member at all. We have not gone through how connections will connect to it. We haven't looked at deflections, if there are constructability considerations there. Um, what I will start with in the next phase is revisiting the column. I know from the preliminary structural analysis that the columns were very lightly loaded and so moving forward what we would look for would be a column that was a W10 but not 10 inches wide 
the original column we used was a W10 by 49. And what I want to show in here is looking at the W10 column sizes, we see that they are grouped in here. And the lightest W10 in this grouping is W10 by 49. And that has to do with the member depth is 10 inches, but also the width, if I come over to BF, is 10 inches. And now that I know that the column has ample capacity early on from our preliminary investigations, I'm going to look at dropping it down and picking one of these columns in the 8, eight inch wide family. Still 10 inches deep nominally, but 8 inches wide. And the importance of that will go back to that connection detail at the base column. This will give us two extra inches to work with. So for right now, as a placeholder, I'm going to put a W10 by 45 column to be verified. The reason we wouldn't go down to the W8 column family has to do with the connections and having room to fit bolts around it. Really, uh, the steel industry is currently recommending a 10 inch be the smallest column depth that we work with. That concludes this video.